Good day, grade nine science students. Today, what we're learning about is the two types of current electricity. One is known as AC and the other one is known as DC. It's not banned, unfortunately. If you ever heard them, they're amazing. From Australia, incredible. But that has nothing to do with the electricity that we're talking about today. Two types. First type that we're going to talk about is DC. DC is direct current and electrons flow in one direction. It has a constant current, so it's always going in one direction from the negative end of to the positive end of the battery. How does a battery work? Well, a battery uses direct current, and then what, what happens is, is you have an anode and an electrode in a battery, and the anode is the negative end, and the cathode is the positive end. And the electrons travel from the negative end to the positive end. And the reason why they do that is the electrons repel each other and try to go where the electrons are not. Uh, if you run your battery out, what you do is you reverse the flow to recharge the battery. So you're forcing electrons into the anode from the cathode. And when you do that, they move back to their original position. So here what we have is we're creating a circuit with a battery and we're gonna put a motor on there. This is a direct current motor. We put our, our, our battery in there and what we're noticing is this is direct current. The electrons flow again from the negative to the positive terminal. And what we would notice if we graph voltage over time is that the voltage would stay very, very steady for a direct current uh, motor. And, but over time, the battery would slowly die. And as it slowly dies, the second type of electricity is known as alternating current. And this is when electron flows in two directions. And it changes 50 times a second, so it's really quickly. So right now, the light bulb that I'm looking at right here, you can see that light bulb, but that is formed by alternating current because it's plugged into the wall and the electrons are going rapidly back and forth. And I can't detect it because it's happening so quickly. So anything that plugs into the wall normally uses AC current. AC socket because, well, um, I live in North America. Notice how the circuit behaves when we turn the switch on. Let's break down what we're seeing by using the voltage graph again. Notice how the current is flowing in one direction and as voltage increases, the light bulb gets brighter. Once the voltage reaches its peak, current flow stays the same, but the voltage begins to drop and the light bulb gets dimmer. Once we reach zero volts, the voltage's polarity changes, causing current to flow in the opposite direction. And again, as the voltage gets closer to its peak, the bulb gets brighter and then dims back down. Okay, we need to define a couple of things. First is, the change from start to finish is called a cycle. The rate at which the cycle repeats is frequency. Now, frequency is measured using the unit hertz, which means cycles per second. Different parts of the world use different frequencies for their AC systems, and it can either be 50 or 60 hertz. What this means is in one second, the cycle will repeat itself at least 50 times. Believe it or not, incandescent bulbs are actually flashing over 50 times per second. Now, it turns out that this rate is so fast that our slow human eyes sees it as constant light. In summary, while the abbreviation... So normally the difference between um, AC and DC, one of the things that we need to know is, is that DC only uses 12 volts. It's not a lot of voltage. Uh, whereas AC uses very high voltage, 120 volts of AC current. And we're going to learn that because of that, AC uh, can travel a lot farther than DC can. DC was invented by Thomas Edison, and AC was invented by Tesla. And Thomas Edison's electricity could travel very short distances, where Tesla could travel very long distances because of the fact that it had such high voltage and it lost such low energy. It's going back and forth very, very quickly. And you could travel electricity very, very long distance. So that means your house uses AC because your house is far away from the power plant. If your house used just DC, then it would have to be very, very close within kilometers of that power plant. So look at this. Quick question. What are these items? Television, refrigerator, cell phone, flashlight, hair dryer, laptop. Which ones use AC? Which ones use DC? Well, the simple answer is anybody who plugs themselves into the wall is using uh, AC, okay? And anybody who is plugging into, that uses a battery is using DC. Now, the interesting thing is, is that if you actually plug your, you know, your cell phone or your iPad like this, this is a square box. It's an adapter. And what it does is it takes the alternating current and turns it to direct current so you can plug things directly in. 
any uh, laptops. <coughs> I'm pulling my laptop box here. It uses this device that converts AC from the wall into DC. So one thing we're going to learn is how it actually generates electricity in this unit. And what happens is, is that our house actually has AC coming into it and it goes to a fuse box that or a circuit breaker box in your basement. And every single light switch and, and outlet is connected to a fuse. And what happens is if you plug too many things in, the reason why it blows is because the amount of electrons you need is too high. The current is too high. And it blows that circuit and you have to go downstairs and switch it off and try again or unplug things from your circuit uh, because you're overwhelming your, your circuit breaker. So that's it for today. We're going to do a few more lessons uh, on um, parallel and series and, and we're going to understand circuits a little bit more here. Thanks. Bye.